this demonstration, you'll learn how to perform a basic fluid flow simulation using a template. To begin, from the list of simulation process templates, I'll pick Fluid Flow. And there I can find some options to customize the template. I know for the geometry I'm using, the flow volume will need to be extracted. So I'll import an existing geometry, and by default, Allow Geometry Modeling is selected for me, which will allow me to create the flow volume. I'll click Next and select my geometry. The geometry is now visible. It is a manifold with three inlets and one outlet. I'll keep the default physics settings and I'll focus on setting up and solving a steady state fluid flow simulation. Next, I'll define the fluid physics region. Because I want to create the fluid volume from this geometry, I'll need to select Create Bodies Forming the Fluid Region. And later, I'll use the Geometry Modeling tool in AIM to extract the fluid volume. I'll select the fluid material, which in this case is water. Clicking Next takes me to the summary page, where I can review my selections. Discovery AIM will use that geometry and the template to build an outline of a fluid flow simulation. The template has produced a number of tasks, some of which are incomplete that I, as a user, have to complete. This is the advantage of using a template. The framework of a basic fluid simulation is automatically created for me. I can still customize the simulation process to meet my needs as I go. To start, I see the geometry task is complete, but I still need to edit my geometry so that I can extract the flow volume of the manifold. I'll click the Edit Geometry button, and now I can access the options to perform the volume extraction. I'll go into the Prepare tab and select Volume Extract. I'll select the faces that enclose the region. I'll also select the seed face, which will determine the inside volume of the region. Make sure to click the check mark to create the flow volume. Closing the Model Editor window on the top right of the Graphics window will save my extraction and take me back to my physics simulation. To better see my extracted volume, I'll hide the structural body using the Body Selection tool and right-clicking Hide Body, and I'll similarly select the Hide Edges tool to hide the edges. Moving along the workflow view, the next task I need to complete is the Flow task. It has an Attention Required message, which means I need to do something to complete the Fluid Physics task. If I click to learn more about this message, it will take me to the Messages tab where I can get more guidance on what I need to do to make sure my simulation is fully up to date. In the flow task, there are a lot of options, but by using a template, many of them have been set for me. For instance, since we are using a flow template, a fluid flow physics region has been created. This is the first area that requires attention. The physics region defines what type of simulation will be performed and where the corresponding equations will be solved. Currently, I am only solving for the flow field in the manifold. If I was interested in the temperature field, I could also activate thermal here. But for this demonstration, I will stick with just fluid flow. For the location, I'll select the entire body to represent the flow region. Notice the attention required message is resolved and it now shows this task to be up to date. Going back to the physics task, I want to confirm that the material that I assigned in the template is water. Here it is. I can see the properties for water by expanding this panel. Once again in the flow task, I see by the blue button that I'm ready to solve. However, I know that I still need to define some fluid flow conditions. By default, the template defines all the fluid flow faces as wall boundaries. To set up the manifold correctly, I need to define three inlets and one outlet. I'll close this panel because I can set up most of my physics by the right click of a button. I'll select this face and right click. I'll go Add, Fluid Flow Conditions, and choose Inlet. Now a small property panel appears and I can enter some information about the inlet boundary condition. I'll enter a velocity magnitude of 5 meters per second and press Enter. The icon on the model tells me that an inlet fluid flow condition has been added on this face. I can edit the boundary conditions by just clicking on this icon and the property panel will reappear. I'll repeat this process for the other inlets using velocities of 7 and 10 meters per second respectively. 
I'll select the opposite end of the manifold and assign it an outlet with a gauge static pressure of 0 pascals. Now all five faces are assigned a fluid flow condition and I can proceed. I can see that the flow task is no longer in a state of attention required, but is now out of date. This means I have fully defined the task and can now solve the physics. This will start the solver. I can monitor the solution by opening the Solution Monitors tab and watching the residuals update after each iteration. The solution is now complete and we can move on to viewing the results. The fluid flow template has created a result for me. It's a velocity vector plot. All I have to do is update the results task to see it. And here it is. It looks a little sparse, so I'll increase the number of symbols from 100 to 500 and reevaluate. Finally, I'm going to add a mass flow calculation at the inlets and the outlet. I'll select the three inlet faces and right click. I'll go Add, Results, Mass Flow, and I'll evaluate. I'll do the same for the outlet. Here, you can see that the mass flow is balanced between the inlets and the outlet. This concludes this demonstration of using a fluid flow template in Discovery AIM.